because a lot of developers they keep talking about uh, it's too verbose to write code in Java. Yeah, true. Not anymore. That's the only complaint they have. Uh, right. So we got ChatGPT, normal chat. Mm -hmm. For developers, we got uh, the Copilot, and right. now from Amazon we got Code Whisperer. So ultimately, mm -hmm. I think it's helping the developers. But then there are a lot of thoughts in the market, will it replace jobs or let's not talk about the jobs per se here. Welcome back everyone, my name is Davin Reddy and we have Mala Gupta here. She's a Java champion, she has worked on multiple projects and now you're working with JetBrains. That's For right. a long time, right? It's not new. Uh, no, it's been four years now that I've been working with JetBrains. Okay, yep. and everyone knows about JetBrains, right? One of the most famous IDE for Java developers, the yes. IntelliJ IDEA. Yes, that's right, IntelliJ IDEA. Okay, so can you just show, uh, tell your journey and what you're doing at JetBrains now? Um, okay, so let me start with what I'm doing with JetBrains now. I work with JetBrains as a Java developer advocate. What that really means is that I help, help developers understand the new features of Java and to be able to for them to use Java in more uh, easy way, uh, I would say, mm -hmm. and um, at JetBrains. So, so that's that's what my job is: helping developers understand Java, mm -hmm. how to use it better in their applications, and in the process also how to use the IDE to uh, which makes their their work easier. That's, that's cool. It. In fact, for sure, every developer uses some kind of IDE. That's right. And uh, most of them are using IntelliJ IDEA. Yeah. Now, based on this, I have a question for you. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot of people were saying that Java is dead. Uh, in fact, I have a, I'm working on Java from last 14 mm -hmm. years now. And mm -hmm. every time I felt, mm -hmm. so there's a situation point in my life where I felt, okay, now that's enough of Java. Let's move to mm -hmm. some other languages or some other frameworks. Yeah. And I don't know why I come back to Java for the same, for, the, <laughs> for some reason. Mm -hmm. And from till Java 8, a lot of people updated themselves properly because the release was happening in two years, three years, so we, have, mm -hmm. we were having enough time to upgrade. Nice. So from Java 5 I started, uh, mm -hmm. Java 7 it was easy to upgrade, then Java 8 came with a lot of features. Right. But after Java 8 things started changing, now right. we are getting a release cycle of six months. Yes. And then if you see now, it's Java 20 is here. Java yes. 21 is coming on the way, or yes. 21 already came. If I'm not no, 21 is in September. September. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you look at the developers, they have one problem where they say, okay, I was working on, I was working on Java 8 mm -hmm. and suddenly I was sleeping and then suddenly I woke up to see Java 20 <laughs> now. How do I upgrade to all these versions at the same time? Okay. So, of course, it's difficult to learn everything and it's mm -hmm. not even important to learn everything. Right. So, right. what do you pick five to seven features which, according mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. is important to learn, which mm -hmm. they can complete in a less amount of time? Right. So that they can feel confident, okay, now I know till Java 17 at least, which is the LTH version. Right. First of all, it's difficult to please the developers because when the Java releases were happening in two, three years, everyone was saying Java is dead. Right. And now when we have Java uh, releases every uh, six, months, six months, now yeah. everyone is saying you just blink your eyes and you have a new version of Java, so, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I completely get your point about uh, having a lot of features or having a lot of versions because that could be overwhelming because mm -hmm. if a developer is working on Java 8, it could be overwhelming for them to move to a much newer version because yeah. my day job includes keeping pace with the new developments in Java and it's hard yeah, sure. because as you mentioned, we have two releases every year and that really means that the developers can use the new features as mm -hmm. soon as they are ready for the Oracle team to be kind of pushed out. Right. So yes, overwhelming, good for the developers. Mm. Now coming to your point about uh, five features that yeah. uh, um, developers could use. Mm -hmm. And you rightly said that because they don't need to know each and every feature because yeah. there are a lot and no developer would be able to kind of get a hang of all the features, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. So I, I would say to the developers, take a look at the pain points that you have in your applications because some developers might uh, feel they are having issues with writing code which is more mm -hmm. concise. Some might feel about uh, issues with the performance mm -hmm. of uh, the JVM. Yeah. Some might even think about the tooling is not good. So pick the pain point that you see is most obvious. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one way of going. Mm -hmm. And then you can move in that direction and then you can kind of chalk a path and see what are the features that come in Java. Uh, since Java 8 till this version which talks about let's say the language enhancements mm -hmm. 
or the improvements with the, uh, the garbage collectors or uh, the other things that we talk about. Yeah. The other way would be to kind of box these features as I was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, instead of looking at the pain points, you could be passionate about, let's say, language features that come in because they, those are the most visible one. They mm -hmm. are, those are the ones on which the spotlight always yeah. shines. The other one is about the JVM features because they, there have been improvements in the existing garbage collectors that are there in the JVM okay. and addition of a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of I would say, <laughs> uh, two to three garbage collector we have, those mm -hmm. have been added to the JVM since eight. So, okay. so developers should go and check them out. Mm -hmm. We are also talking about how the performance of the Java applications can improve when we are uh, talking about cloud native. Mm -hmm. There's also Graal VM. Okay. So, of course, you can uh, compile your code to your native mm -hmm. machine. Of course, you lose the benefits, a lot of which are for the JVM. But yes, you solve some problem and you mm -hmm. create some problem, then yeah. that's how you keep the circle. Oh, no, no, just right. kidding. No, there, <laughs> there are, of course, a lot of benefits to that approach. Mm -hmm. But yes, you need to kind of val evaluate those. Mm -hmm. So, you can box them and um, then you can go about. So, okay. cool. so it's <laughs> not every feature is important. So, focus on your problem statement and uh, find what things you can change, not everything you have to learn. Yes, and if we talk about the Java language features, mm -hmm. uh, I, I could give you some of the Java features, language features, which I, which are my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. So from Java 8, if you are going, moving forward, mm -hmm. let's say to Java 21, mm -hmm. there are a couple of them. You can talk about type interference. Okay. Uh, there is a very cool feature, records, which really helps you create new types in a very mm -hmm. concise way. Yeah. Pat matching, which has come in uh, stages. You have pat matching for instance of, mm -hmm. pat matching for switch expressions. Then okay. we have record patterns. Mm -hmm and uh, seal classes seal class. and, and a couple of others and they're really really good features i would say that really helps you make your code concise because a lot of developers they keep talking about um, it's too verbose to write code in mm. java yeah, true. not anymore that's the only complaint they have <laughs> uh yes because uh, a lot of people do talk about only some features which are yes essential to the whole development uh, mm. ecosystem but yeah. the language features are just part of it. There have been tons and tons of improvement in the JVM. So mm -hmm. if you just pick your old application and drop it to the new Java version, it mm -hmm. will probably run much faster, twice as faster or even even more than that. Oh, so that's awesome. so that's, that's amazing. Cool. In fact, yeah. I have seen features till Java 17. Again, I have to upgrade from last uh, okay. three versions now. I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Now moving on to the next question, which mm -hmm. is, every time you get new updates, of course as a developer, it's our job to learn them, right? right. But then ultimately, when we want to practice or when we want to implement those things, mm -hmm. we use an IDE. Right. That means to use that particular feature, the yes. IDE has to support that feature. That's so basically right. you're working for JetBrains, of course you have seen the development of an intelligent idea. Right. So I want to understand the thought process or the things mm -hmm. which they do to implement these new features. I mean, that's, that's an excellent question, I would say, because a lot of developers understand this part yeah. of, of what you just mentioned. So uh, I can't speak for other IDEs. Mm -hmm. I can talk for IntelliJ IDEA yeah. because I also closely work with, with the Java team at mm -hmm. uh, JetBrains. So we take a look at the new features that are coming in the language mm -hmm. and how developers can use that feature. Okay. Uh, because it's not just the syntax, mm -hmm. it is about how that feature would talk with the other features as well. Okay. Because there are a lot of existing language features mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. Java as well. Right. So how as a developer you would use some feature mm -hmm which also works with the other feature and the best ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for a quick example, I can talk about the if uh, else statement. Mm -hmm. Every developer I know would have written an if right. else statement. Yeah. So it's a long if else statement. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about uh, the pattern matching for switch that came in mm -hmm. um, with the, the type patterns and yeah. even with the record patterns, mm -hmm. now developers can just look at the switch statement mm -hmm. and the IntelliJ idea would have a feature, we call them inspections and mm -hmm. intentions. Okay. So one part would determine that yes a change can be done here the other part would suggest those changes to you mm -hmm. so even without you knowing the la new language feature or their syntax right. you can change your existing code mm -hmm. to a newer version yeah. at the click of a button right 
So and we don't even know what version we are using. We're just saying, new, let's use new, new feature. Yes, exactly. Okay. You just have to secure IDE level to uh, mm -hmm. use a particular language uh, right. number, uh -huh. uh, the uh, sorry, the Java number, and yeah. that would do the work for you. So that's how uh, the developers who are working mm -hmm. would uh, know and understand that yes, changing if else to a switch construct would be one way on how developers would like to use that new feature. Mm -hmm. The other part about your question would be how do we work? Uh, so we closely work with the Oracle team, uh, the mm -hmm. Java team at the Oracle, okay. and we do communicate with them even regarding some design issues. So it's not just they are producing something and we are consuming that. It's a, it's a I would say, a two-way communication mm -hmm. because Java is also, uh, it's open JDK, so people, right. uh, a lot of people contribute. Mm -hmm. So we do that as well. We, we talk to the language archi um, architect as well, Brian mm -hmm. Getz, and a lot, a lot of other cool uh, people yeah, on, cool. On, on that team. Right. Um, and we try to find ways so that the new Java features mm -hmm. can be used by the developers as and when the Oracle, as and when Oracle releases them. It's, okay. it's available in the OpenJDK. Because what a new feature is good of, if mm -hmm. it cannot be used by developers, right. or if it cannot be used easily by developers. True. So we try to kind of uh, do both of them. And yeah. because we are a team of Java developers, we mm -hmm. understand the language, we understand how things are used, we're talking with the company that uh, steers yeah. the, uh, the Java language direction, so a lot of good things, I would say, in the process. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's always tricky to understand their perspective, but yeah, now yeah. it makes sense. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay. And this is the hot topic in the market, the AI tools. Uh, right. So we got ChatGPT, normal chat. Mm -hmm. For developers, we got uh, the Copilot. And right. now, from Amazon, we got Code Whisperer. So ultimately, mm -hmm. I think it's helping the developers. Mm -hmm. But then there are a lot of thoughts in the market, will it replace jobs or let's mm -hmm. not talk about the jobs per se here. Mm -hmm. The question really will, is how a developer should use this tool? Should they rely on those tools or just mm -hmm. use them as a tool? Because if, mm -hmm. if a code generator gives you a code, how can you mm -hmm. trust it in terms of security, in terms of performance? Mm -hmm. if, 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 our codes, if the code suggested says, okay, this use this, and blindly we say, okay, I will use this code. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's safe or should we use a different approach towards AI tool? Um, I would say first, the tools that you're talking about, they are definitely useful because that's why we are seeing an increase in the number of their subscribers yeah. and the people who are using it and we even talking about it. So yes, they are definitely useful. Mm -hmm. The second point I would like to mention is do not trust these tools blindly. Mm -hmm. uh, I would uh, consider them as, let's say, an expert or a friend or a person who knows about everything. Mm -hmm. But I would still apply my own thoughts, logic, mm -hmm. my um, test in place so that I could verify that code uh, mm -hmm. which is being given to me. I would have my test in place. Yeah. I would uh, have other tools to check for the security. Mm -hmm. If there are issues with the licenses, I don't know how to go about yes. that part yet. <laughs> uh, but uh, still, it's when I'm consuming anything, mm -hmm. I would have my checks in place so that yeah. I can trust that piece of code. True. In fact, that's important. A lot of people don't understand it's not just about working product it's about your product should be secure yes it's, you have absolutely. to make sure that it is performing well mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so we, we can have a big debate on licensing part but let's not mm -hmm. do that in this video otherwise mm -hmm. github will put a claim <laughs> on the video <laughs> so yeah right. so it, it makes sense now so thank mm -hmm. you so much Mala, for your answers on this question mm -hmm. and uh, surely in future Mm -hmm. The version which I'm talking about, Java 18, 19, 20. Right. So maybe in one day we can have a live session where we can talk about these new features. Absolutely. Yeah, I, because I would subscribers love to, are waiting for it. I would love to do that. Okay, I cool. So if you want those features, let me know in the comment section. I will mm -hmm. send this screenshot to Mala and <laughs> she'll be in pressure to come live and talk about those features. Thank you so much. I'd, I'd love to. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Yeah, it's our pleasure to welcome mm -hmm. the Java champion in the platform. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Thank you.